Okay, I'd like to go over each of the approaches we've talked about and kind of the, the different properties they have. So the first approach was um, no caching. And, and this meant on every page view, we were doing a DB read. And when we submitted a new piece of art, there was no DB reads. Then we did this um, kind of uh, what I would describe as the naive caching approach, which was basically have the basic cache. If the cache is empty, do the DB read. And if it's not, return the result. And we'll, we'll, we'll add a, a, a third column on the edge here called bugs. So the naive caching only does a DB read on a cache miss and doesn't do any reading on a submit and is full of bugs. <laughs> or at least has one bug where the, the front page would become out of, out of date, that the front page would become stale. So then we started clearing the cache. This has the same property of doing a DB read on a page view, no DB read on a, on a submit, and no bugs. Then we improved to the kind of the, the refreshing of the cache. And so this means we're no longer doing any DB reads on page views, or very rarely. Basically, only the first time our app turns on and the cache is empty and that first page view. Every other page view after that is cached, which is a really nice property to have. And we're doing one DB read per submission, and it works. Now, the difference between, between these two and this one is the notion that a page view doesn't hit the database hardly ever. And that's a really nice property to have. You, you should always be striving to have the situation where a normal, unlogged in, basic you know, viewer of your website doesn't touch the database. And, and I, I'm going to kind of condense that down to the, the, the notion that simple users shouldn't touch the database. Basically, you know, they're just lurkers. They're just reading. They're, they're not changing the site, so they shouldn't be touching the database. Everything should be cached and ready to go for them. That makes the user experience better because the request will be faster, and it makes it keeps your load down because you can add many, many of those users, and because they're just bouncing off the cache, you don't have to do very much work to serve them. You don't have to actually hit the database. Now, there's a fourth approach that we didn't uh, implement yet, which is the most aggressive of all of these, and I'm going to kind of refer to this as distinct from refreshing the cache. I'm going to call it updating the cache, and I'll, and I'll talk about this approach uh, in just a sec. And we can get to the state where um, on, a, on a page view, on a simple page view, we do zero DB reads ever. And this is slightly better than rarely. And we don't do any database reads on submission either. And it works. This is a really nice property to have. Now, of course, we still do our database right. You notice we haven't been optimizing writes at all because you've got to store this you got to store the submission at some point. But you can cut down on the database reads, lower them to both zero by keeping your cache completely up to date. And I'll show you how um, we might do that right now. OK, we're going to look at this picture uh, one more time here. We know all the pieces now, the user, the ASCII channel, the database, and our cache. We're going to talk about a new situation here. So let's, talk, let's pretend our cache is already warm. You know, it's got some pictures in there. And we're hitting the front page, which hits our cache, which you know, returns the result that we send back to the user. Nothing um, too complex there. We're not hitting the database because we're only doing reads. Now, what happens is when we do a database write, we're going to send that write to the database. We're simultaneously going to send that write to our cache as well. And so this, this gets a little bit more complex. We're going to send the write to the database. And instead of immediately rereading from the database to update our cache or clearing our cache, we're just going to update the cache. We're going to say, OK, this affects the front page. So let's find that front page cache, insert our new piece of um, you know, ASCII art into the cache. And then from then on, that follow-up request, that, that redirect, that follow-up request to slash is basically going to bounce right off the cache again. And so we never did, we never did a database read during this whole process. We're just writing only. The only time we would do a database read is when we that, you know, start up the app for the first time and do that first request. Or maybe we have a program that, that does that for us, so no user ever um, does a database read. And this is actually how we do things on Reddit now. Every listing you can look at is stored in its own cache. And when you submit a link or do a vote, we update all of the appropriate caches, all the, all the different cache keys that may be affected. So, so, so we've kind of introduced the trade-off here of you know, complex inserts versus um, database reads. On, on Reddit, we actually do this. We have you know, a different cache key for every, every listing you might look at, you know, for every sorting, for every subreddit, all, et cetera, et cetera. And when you submit a link or you vote, we have to update all of, all of the possible listings that could be affected by that action. On the flip side, you know, users are pummeling the site all the time, and they never read from the database. And you know, so we have complex inserts plus speed, which is nice, but you know, 
complexity is complexity. Um, on ASCII Chan, we probably don't need to do this right now. Um, our site just isn't at that scale. It, it doesn't, you know, a cache stampede isn't a realistic threat because we don't have that many users. But if we did, this is the kind of approach we'd want to take. And, and so this is kind of the name of the game when caching. You know, if we want to keep this cache totally accurate without doing database writes, we're going to have to do, you know, complex code. So one thing to keep in mind is the more accurate the cache, the more complex the code. And these are the decisions you'll make as you build your website. And as you're scaling, you know, this is probably the ultimate solution you want to look to when you're kind of caching your database, you know, if the, if the solution works for you.